Thank you, Dipi. Uh, Himanshu sir, may I request you to welcome sure, madam. our sure, madam. special speaker, Dr. Kiran Nandive. Yes, madam. Yeah. So very good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Seeking blessings of our mentor, our teacher, Dr. S.M. Karmakar. We begin with the proceedings of the session. On behalf of Individa Pacha Samiti's Ramdhanajan Junjunwala College, and also on behalf of Association of Teachers in Biological Sciences, I extend a very warm welcome to our guest speaker for the day, Dr. Kiran Randiwe, to deliver a talk on fungal diversity around us. In this guest lecture series, which is being jointly organized by RJ College and the DBT Star College scheme and uh, Association of Teachers in Biological Sciences. Nature has so many wonders and marvels that one human life is truly not just enough to understand and appreciate all this. We as science fraternity are more privileged that we are at least able to examine this beautiful things of the nature closely with the eyes of our microscopic lens and mind. Our speaker today is going to take us to the beautiful world of fungi. And like many of the students of a PG program and UG program who are present today, we all are also going to turn into a teach student and learn a lot from Sir. Thank you very much, Sir, for accepting our invitation to deliver this talk. I now request my colleague from the Botany Department, Dr. Dan Bahadur Singh, to give a formal introduction of our guest speaker today. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir, and good afternoon, one and all. Myself, Dr. D.V. Singh from Department of Biological Science. Feeling privileged, or it's my pleasure to introduce today eminent speaker, Dr. Kiran Randive. Yesterday, Imansu sir asked me to introduce sir and send the CV. And when I opened the CV, I was quite amazed. The thing was, it is a 16-page CV in a small font, and it took more than 30 minutes to read it. His achievement, his activity, his involvement, and the future prospects, and found that he is the one of the best person to deliver talk on fungi diversity, fungal diversity around us. Sir, with due respect and your permission, I have tried my best to to concise the introduction part. If I have missed something which is very important, please forgive me. And if I am taking one, two minutes more in introduction part, please forgive me. Dr. Kiran Randive is Associate Professor at PDEA, Anna Sahab Magar, Mahavidyale Pune. He is having experience, teaching experience of 19 years. And he got the uh, research research experience also on lichen taxonomy at Agarkar Research Institute for about 12 months. He received grant for, of 30,000 award on the topic or the project Biodiversity <laughs> Conservation Club by Maharashtra State Biodiversity Board. He is the PhD guide and soft skill trainer of Savitri Bai Phule Pune University. He was appointed as the examiner of PhD thesis at Kerala Agriculture University. Again, he is a member of BOS and a nominated as a nominated member of the research advisory board of PhD research at the center at Tulja Ram Chatur Chand College, Baramati. <clears throat> he is invited as an associate editor of the International Journal Myco Asia, an international peer reviewed journal. He is reviewer of the three different journals, out of which one is national and two are international journals. The national journal is Cryptogams Biodiversity and Assessment, and the two international are Cream Journal and BMC Journal of Springer Nature Germany. First one is in Beijing. Now, <clears throat> He is awarded with many awards. Out of that, one international award is there, that is 
Martin Baker Award in 2070 by Mycological Society of America for best work in mycology from India, and Sir is the first one to get the award from India. One inter one national award he has also received that is Bharat Jyoti Award. So it's a uh, India in International Friendship Society, New Delhi. and there are six local awards sir has received he received two fellowship also one is csir jrf net fellowship and teacher fellowship then he is in collaboration with kumar rao botanical institute russia for the study of wood rotting fungi fungal study when i am saying specificity then there are two things we have to listen carefully because one A species is identified by Sir of Jailaria in India first time. That is Jailaria simplococcae, and above that, one polyporous member is named after Sir, and the genus name is Randivia. So it is a great achievement. He developed first Indian website on fungi. so as far as publication is concerned he published nine articles in the science calendar and 27 research papers to his credit out of that 23 are international generally we are looking that more national and less international here the case is totally opposite 23 international peer paper and four national paper as a for his publication is concerned for the he wrote four flora related to fungal and lichen then one encyclopedia he published one booklet also and three articles in different magazine he is invited as a <clears throat> invited by many government committee in different capacities the list is very long so i have skipped it he has also conducted many webinar on facebook live and other platform also like youtube and zoom he has taken or given or being part of 15 radio programs so on all india radio and prasar bharti <coughs> now he also conducted more than 10 singing programs in pune so it's a hobby so sir has taken or conducted or taken part in 10 singing programs he is member of member of different associations or society there are eight such societies or associations are there and in last rarely i found future program or plan of speaker or personality in his cv but sir is one of them and he mentioned he has four future aspect the first one is to develop mycological systematic institute in india second one is to develop biodiversity conservation school in western ghat third one develop himself as an ideal teacher and the last one is being member of maharashtra state biodiversity board and sir our wishes are with you and surely and soonly you will be the member of the board so i skipped many thing and for that i am really sorry sir and no, we no, all sir. are eagerly waiting to listen you over to you sir kiran randive sir okay thank you so much for uh, very nice introduction sir uh, first of all uh, at the outset i would like to thank uh, honorable professor karmarkar sir uh, for the, his gracious presence uh, of course I, i got this opportunity to present in front of you of course uh, it's my pleasure uh, nextly i would like to uh, thank uh, professor Uh, usha mukundan madam for inviting me uh, for this uh, particular talk then i am very much thankful to dr suchendra ma'am uh, for suggesting my name and of course uh, the introduction is nicely done by dr singh sir so thanks a lot for your uh, nice introduction so uh, i think uh, now i should start my talk uh, so i will uh, share my ppt uh, so uh, shall i share now yes please okay i will just share my ppt
Yeah. Uh, uh, can you see the PPT? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Very beautiful. So, okay, okay. So, thank you. So, let us uh, go into the world of fungi. So, fungal diversity around us. Uh, so, here, uh, I would like to show you uh, some of the. Sir, uh, I think little bit your uh, network issue. You may think that these are the photographs, but believe me. Okay. Uh, okay, just a minute. Uh, uh, yes, uh, can you hear now? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, so uh, this is what uh, the photograph like thing, but it is not the photograph. All these are the paintings which are made by the scientists uh, as well as the researchers from uh, the abroad. See the edible mushrooms. Here also you can see all these are the actual paintings which are made uh, by some are hand paintings, some are the computer based paintings of edible mushrooms. And this is how exactly we can see the mushrooms, fresh mushrooms in uh, the nature. So here, before going into details of these mushrooms, as well as what type of diversity it is, it is having, we, we must know what is the mushroom. So mushroom is basically, this is the fruiting body. Of course, the soft, uh, I mean, fungi are uh, uh, are called mushrooms. But nowadays, as per the recent sayings, the hard mushrooms like felinas, ganoderma, are also called as mushrooms. So this is one of the uh, concept. The uh, second thing I want to show over here, of course, this is the fruiting body. You can see here the cap and the pileus. Of course, the annulus is there. And inside these gills, you get such types of basidia, which are uh, I mean, produced on the linings or the margins over there. And of course, those basidia will produce basidiospores over there. So this is what the photograph, which is uh, taken under the scanning electron microscope. Now, this is how the exactly mycelium look like in nature. So if you'll come across such type of things in nature or on any leaf litter, then please be careful to see such types of things after a few days because you may, you may get some of the fruiting body formations over there. So this is what the single thread of that mycelium that is called as hypha having the clamp connections. So here the migrations of uh, the nuclei will take place. Then uh, here, this is what the life cycle. So mushroom will uh, is, is having the gills and these, those gills are having, of course, the linings of these basidia. Those basidiospores will germinate, will form hypha, and those uh, hyphae, of course, positive and negative spores will pro produce positive and negative hyphae, and then plasmogamy will occur. Then the mycelium will take place, which I have shown in the earlier slide, and then the fruiting body is going to, uh, going to form. So this is what the basic life cycle of this basidia microtina uh, mushrooms. So I have purposely shown this slide for students uh, because they must know what how exactly these fruiting bodies are forming. See the actual mushrooms. Uh, these photographs uh, uh, we have uh, we can we have taken from the uh, upper Pune University campus also, as well as some of there are from the internet also. So this is the first uh, red colored mushroom exactly, but it is very thin. Uh, being very thin stock or stipe over there. That's why the name has been coined that is marasmius. Marasmius means it, uh, it, it creeps, means exactly it is uh, looking like it is creeping, might be given that is crepidotus. So such types of fungi uh, occur in rainy season or the areas where uh, you can get more moisture. Now, some of the beautiful um, uh, fungal uh, species are here. So this is first one is the sarcosypha. Second one is the tuber. Now, the difference is this sarcosypha generally comes on the uh, stem over there on the, uh, I mean, whatever fallen, you can say leaf litter or sometimes on the wooden stumps also. But this tuber, which is, um, uh, you can say, the fungus which generally grows actually five to six centimeter deep in the soil, it comes naturally. So the, it is one of the rarest fungus that is tuber, estivum is the common species. Now here there are some fungi uh, which are exactly, these are the actual photographs which I have taken from the net. Here you can see the actual, you can say, size of fungi, uh, mushrooms over here. So 
you can see these four fungi. Of course, the, from these two are the uh, termitomyces species. And this is what the Clavacea gigantea uh, type of mushrooms. So such types of mushrooms you do get in nature. And of course, it is not uh, happening uh, in the but we make it and of course I have seen some of the species in Amboli, Malwan areas. There so there is an audio audio and there are some of these species and say poroid mushrooms so you do get in interesting species now another uh, type of randi we said voice voice nahi aa raha i think video off kar dijiye yes video off kar kyunki aapka bandwidth thoda kam hai na video off kar dijiye to fir ha just a minute yes sir yes is it coming okay okay uh, so here uh, on this uh, dung, you can see here the disc-like structures are coming and these are of course belongs to discomycetes groups or one can just remember that it is having the disc-like appearance uh, that's why called as discomycetes it's very very simple and if you will cut the, this particular fungus then definitely uh, vertical section will show you the ASA and ASCO spores over there so it's a very beautiful thing to observe under microscope the another fungus you can see over here that is the uh, fungus which is paniolus it is typical once again the dung fungus uh, this is the third one that is coprinus coprinus uh, species so, so so many species are edible but some species are not edible so uh, i'm telling you all these things because these are the typical habitats of mushrooms so these habitats are also specific and of course those fungi can get there any time in uh, the rainy seasons. Now the next one uh, it is Amania muscaria. Generally in Himachal areas these fungi are very very common. Now uh, these fungus uh, rather these uh, fruiting bodies are highly poisonous mushrooms uh, or we can say the death caps also because if you eat this fruiting body completely then definitely uh, that um, person will definitely die because it is having the uh, chemicals like amani please amani loudly amani. a little louder okay uh, amanita muscaria uh, so this is uh, the mushroom uh, amanita muscaria which is deadly poisonous and this mushroom is uh, uh, having uh, one more effect that is hallucinogenic effect now this hallucinogenic effect of uh, this mushroom uh, can be uh, seen whenever the fruiting body part can be taken and uh, some people uh, from uh, the hilly regions take such type of things as a drugs also but which is very very dangerous because it is a deadly poisonous mushroom now another uh, that is macrolepiota uh, when you travel towards mahabaleshwar or uh, from the western ghat regions these are the species which are very very common like macrolepiota and the sp species which i was talking which is very very common in amboli uh, but and very you can say large um, fruiting bodies are there uh, more than 35 cm you can say fruiting body uh, height is there that is of rasula uh, rasula as well as the boletus so here uh, this is what the agaricus which we eat, that is agaricus bisporus or agaricus bitorchis. Another species we eat that is dhingri mushroom, uh, which is also nowadays very common, which is called as pleurotus uh, fungi or fungal species or edible fungal species, which uh, we can use for the uh, you can say uh, daily diet also. Nowadays, people are preferring, uh, rather in this COVID situation, people are pre preferring the mushroom diet only because of its properties. It is having very less sugar, but it is having very good source of vitamins. Several vitamins are there, as well as several antifungal, antimicrobial, as well as antiviral properties are also there. That's why doctors are also recommending nowadays these button mushrooms for regular diet. So if you want to build up your immunity, then also these button, button mushrooms or whatever edible mushrooms are possible to eat nowadays. It's very, very important. So such type of mushrooms can be grown 
of course uh, a small scale industry can be developed by the students and it requires a limited you can say uh, funding over there but you can get very high result in pune uh, it is agriculture college is having uh, one special department that is the mushroom cultivation department where these uh, mushroom species are cultivated regularly uh, and they are having very uh, nice courses also of these mushrooms cultivations over there so such types of kadai mushrooms are also there but it is not only giving you the vitamins or all these things but it is going to give you life remember of course these problems whatever we are facing nowadays these problems can be cured by this covid uh, you can say 19 can be cured uh, by uh, using these mushroom species also so it is very much necessary that students should start such type of study and as you all know that hardly 20 to 22 percent fungi from world are identified and still there are uh, so many fungi which are waiting for the identification so uh, it is my kind request to the students so it is not just for the preparation of a recipe but just for the sake of you can say identifying such drugs from all these fungi or mushrooms it is highly necessary to study all these things so these are some of the recipes uh, uh, which are available in market in india also now in india on the uh, dhabas and all you get the coffee of ganoderma as well as felinus fungus which is highly great health tonic we can say uh, and you should try for that so such type of gills you can see in this agaricus bisporus now why to uh, uh, i mean test uh, all these mushrooms of course 14000 kinds of mushrooms are there and of course from those 3000 are edible but in india uh, from maharashtra uh, dr av sate sir was there uh, uh, who was working as a senior scientist in agarkar research institute and he identified 110 species of edible mushrooms so that is the first report uh, in this much quantity from india uh, and of course maharashtra and of course students should come forward to take this opportunities because in nowadays also if you go to any villages from konkan region or any you can say western ghat regions then there tribe many tribal communities consume many uh, mushroom uh, protein bodies in the rainy season so it is our duty to find out those uh, strains try to uh, do the marketing of those strains cultivate those strains at a very very uh, faster rate then it is highly possible to develop such type of we can say mushroom industries in a very very particular way uh, so in uh, white mushrooms what do you get so of course the nutrients including niacin riboflavin folate phosphorus iron then pantothenic acid zinc potassium copper magnesium so so many things as well as vitamin b6 also you do get from these mushrooms next thing uh, about these mushrooms is the metabolism support nutrient you are going to get if you are consuming these mushrooms at least once a week you should have these mushrooms then you will be very much healthier you can uh, i mean uh, defend any type of disease like that our scientists are saying the next is a great source of heart healthy copper so this copper which is very much important for our heart functioning that is also uh, can be uh, done rather can can be uh, uh, procured from the mushrooms and of course uh, the cardiovascular systems can be very much enriched next is another very common thing nowadays students are thinking about uh, their weight loss and they are doing dieting so please uh, be careful when you are doing the dieting because there are so many negative effects also uh, of dieting if you are if you will not do in a proper way so mushroom is the best you can say dieting tool we can say so you can try for that as well as uh, it is excellent source as i told that is of potassium and it is mainly giving the disease fighting properties then next one uh, you can get just one serve of mushroom that is 100 kg means of course three button mushrooms will give you these vitamins as well as all those you can say modest amount of folate and vitamins over there these are the actual charts which have been already published by the people so it will give fat 0% then cholesterol also 0% sodium 1 potassium 9% and the total carbohydrate 1% dietary fiber which is very much which is 4% and sugar is uh, of course is given over here so uh, vitamin calcium vitamin d riboflavin vitamin b6 all these are um, of course percentage are very high so of course you should uh, i mean prefer the mushroom diet nowadays also 
So these are the essential amino acids uh, composition from the edible mushroom people have found out from Agaricus bisporus, Lentinilla, Edots, that is the shiitake, Eurotus is there, and Vulvariella vulvacea is also there, which is the paddy mushroom. So these mushrooms will give you these many, uh, you can say, amino acids over here, see the percentage, and it has been compared with the help, with uh, those hen's egg. So if you'll see the actual quantity, then definitely these quantities are very good, compatibly very, very good. So these are the total lipid, uh, saponifiable lipids and non-saponifiable lipids are also there in these edible mushrooms people have studied and they have got very good, uh, you can say, percentage which is very good for human diet. Then comparison of the nutritive values of the mushrooms with various foods also people have done. And of course, they have got these, the, these are the peculiarities over here. So this is what you should think always that you should prefer all the time, whatever you can say naturally growing mushrooms at the, at the same time, you should prefer these uh, cul properly cultivated mushrooms over there. But it is not the condition that whenever you are traveling towards uh, uh, you know, on, on any road and you will get some mushroom and you will start directly eating those mushrooms. Please don't do that because it will be uh, very, very dangerous because those mushrooms may be poisonous also. Okay, so don't try any wild mushrooms any time. But you should try these um, button mushrooms are going to harm your body. These are the um, approximate compositions of the cultivated species of edible mushrooms. These are the total, you can say, how much fiber is there, uh, what uh, what are the fat, crude fats are there. So all these are results are available. Of course, these I have taken from the internet. So you can have a look to these things anytime, no problem. But uh, this saturated and unsaturated fatty acid is also going to play a very important role in the defense of uh, actually. So that's why you should focus on all these things. Uh, then uh, this is once again the mushroom vulvariella, vulvariella vulvacea which is showing these many fat, fatty acids over there as well as total lipid contents also of vulvacea as well as the nucleic acid contents uh, and uh, the mushrooms uh, as compared to the microorganisms is also given over here. Uh, and then this is what the mushroom uh, or you can say pup ball uh, which we get generally in the mycorrhizal association with the eucalyptus. Generally, it grows near the eucalyptus tree and it is having the mycorrhizal association. So uh, such type of, uh, you can say, pup balls are um, taken as a food by some of the uh, animals over there. And these are noted from India also, but no work has been done on this that is called as mycophagy. Okay, I will, in, in one of the slide, I'm going to show you how many mushrooms are eaten up by uh, those mammals or insects. Uh, uh, from India as well as abroad, uh, which will uh, give you one uh, completely different aspect of mycology, that is mycophagy. So uh, you might be thinking about what this person is doing with this pig over here, but this, this person is very wise enough, and this person is using this female pig to identify uh, these uh, mushrooms or uh, fungi, those are called as the tuber or uh, whatever you can say, tuber estivum, a uh, truffle fungi. So these are very, very delish, uh, delicacies of my mycological things that is uh, tuber estivum. And this is another one that is uh, the very common fungus uh, from Himachal area that is Morchella. This is also one of the, uh, you can say, uh, uh, very, very high Prizely, uh, selling uh, mushrooms from India as well as abroad. That is uh, now uh, the nutritional values of these truffles, of course, uh, 100 gram uh, you know, contains so many vitamins as well as uh, you can say protein contents are also very, very high. So these are the actual protein contents and vitamin contents of the same that is the tuber estivum. Now these are the colorful uh, fungi like coral fungi we call uh, in common language, but it has nothing to do with the corals, but it is looking like coral, that's why like called coral fungi. So in Maharashtra and of course in the Western Ghats, uh, you do get uh, many species of such type of uh, fungal groups and those groups are not, not at all studied. Uh, it, one, one monograph is there from uh, Himachal area, the uh, prof. on Clavariasi. After that, uh, no uh, mushroom group over here. 
Now, another group is the uh, aster like, or you can say, G astrum type of fungi, the Asterius hygrometricus. So, such types of, or the, you can say, sister, you can say, genera, you do get that is G astrum, which, which is very common in Western Ghats of Maharashtra. Now, these fungi are also having its uh, protein content as well as some of the immunomodulator also are there. So immune systems can be, you can say, very, very much enriched with the help of such type of things. And some are anti-cancerous also, anti-tumorous properties are also there in this particular gastrom gastromycetes fungi. Another one, this is auricularia auriculogidae or juice ear fungus, it is commonly, it is looking like a ear lobe over there. That's why it is called a juice ear fungus. Generally, juice pe people uh, ear size is longer. That's why uh, this is the commonly named juice ear fungus. It is also having the anti-tumors properties. And many species of this auricularia, auricularia you do get in the Western Ghats. And of course, uh, you should um, identify that and you should go for the study, biochemical study of that. So I think it is possible to publish very high impact research papers also through this. So these are some of the medicinal properties. So it is uh, having these many uh, medical medicinal properties, but I, I would like to focus your attention to this anti-tumor and cardiovascular uh, prop enriching properties over there. So this is what uh, the thing which is from auricularia. Now there are some certain other fungi like uh, foams nowadays. Uh, sometimes you uh, get the news from uh, internet or uh, in the newspaper that this tree has fallen down and because of uh, something, something has happened. So it is uh, generally taking place because of such types of rots over there. Uh, brown rots are there, white rots are there. So those foams or for foams uh, species are uh, responsible. At the same time, one medicinal fungus is responsible uh, for that. Uh, tree degradation also, and that is the Ganoderma, which I'm going to show you in the next slide. This is another one, Claviridelphus um, uh, truncates and Griffula frondosa. So these are also some of the very beautiful uh, fungi, but medicinal fungi. This is another one, which is common fungus uh, uh, in India, that is Lentinula edots, in commonly called shiitake mushroom. This mushroom is the best mushroom for uh, reducing your cholesterol level, uh, uh, of course, from the blood cholesterol level is decreased at a very high speed rate by this shiitake mushroom. This is the actual photograph and some strains are uh, there present in the Western Ghats over here. This is the mushroom which I was talking that is Ganoderma. It can cure more than 100 diseases uh, at a time. Uh, that, uh, that like, uh, for example, suppose somebody want to do the screen, skin transplant, uh, transplantation, then also it is possible to transplant the skin with the help of mycelium of this Ganoderma. Such papers are available on internet. You can have a look to those anytime. So uh, that is one, one type. It is one of the uh, uh, fungus which is used for anti-tumor property. So uh, it's very, very um, important property and it is because of certain chemicals who are there. So these are the triterpenes or ergosterol are there in this particular mushroom groups. And fortunately, this mushroom uh, is having so many species from Western Ghats. We have published one paper on the taxonomy and diversity of Ganoderma from Western parts of Maharashtra. You can have a look, uh, rather glimpses of those Ganoderma you can see in that paper. This is another uh, fungus uh, that is uh, cordyceps or ophiocordyceps sinensis. One of the uh, fungus which is uh, nowadays highly, you can say, studied fungus and highly important fungus. So it is going to uh, price uh, over here. See the price in yuan. It is highly, uh, rather very costly mushroom, we can say. And you will surprise to know that this mushroom is the uh, entomopathogenic fungus. This mushroom kills insect whatever caterpillars are there and those those insects are killed and after that the fruiting bodies of yellow color uh, blackish color orange color will come from those uh, infected insects so this is one of the uh, fantastic uh, fungus and highly you can say rated fungus nowadays and it's very very common in all over the world but from western guards very limited species have been reported but there are a lot many species which are waiting for that. These are the small, these are some of the mushroom products which 
which we we get in uh, the markets like bio rishi rishi is the name use common name for the ganoderma fungus this mushroom coffee we mix also it is available nowadays uh, on the dhabas also as well as on in the malls also it's common like uh, you can see the mushroom products uh, any crunchy oyster mushroom chips are also available and all these products are very very important for your uh, nutrient contents so this see these are some of the sauces some of the oils also people have extracted as well as some some have prepared the condensed soups also uh, as well as some uh, yellow popcorn like structures or also people have prepared and the main thing that is mushroom cookie so these cookies are also one of the healthiest source for the uh, for enriching your immunity so that's why these uh, things are available now here these fungi for drums i have purposely written because this is the stipe and this is the cap or the pileus of that mushroom this is one of the mushroom having the stipe of uh, more than 30 cm over there now this uh, 30 cm stipe whenever this mushroom gets dry off at that time that stipe becomes very very hard and with the help of stipe you can beat the drums that's why this is drumstick fungus it is commonly called as drumstick now the thing i was talking uh, before uh, three four slides that was mycophagy so here you can see the uh, animals uh, eating different species of mushrooms so see here these are the three squirrels the squirrels are first squirrel is eating pyrotus second one it is eating uh, the cantharella species and the third one and that is the rusula species so the squirrels also know very well what to eat which species to eat so of course if we focus on all these uh, you can say identifications then definitely you can means a single uh, report or the single observation can give you international publications uh, so this is what i wanted to tell the students so you should focus on all these things as early as possible because nowadays as the developments are going on in every region so some of the habitats are uh, getting lost so before those habitat get lost we should study the mushroom you can say uh, types or whatever fungal types are there from those regions then it is possible to at least make the documentation otherwise it may it may vanish before documentation also so it's my kind request to all of you to at least do one observation and try to publish a single paper from your locality it will be more than enough to conserve our mycological we can say uh, facets of nature now here uh, these are some of the deers we are uh, which are eating uh, fungal fruiting bodies here some of the snails of course tortoise is also eating the mushroom uh, here red fox and some of the ants also ride mushrooms so that's why be uh, uh, keen uh, to observe all these things then you can do a lot in mycological things now here i was telling you about uh, dr av sathe sir uh, who was uh, there in agarka research institute as a senior Uh, scientist mycologist indian well known indian mycologist uh, he was the person who studied mushrooms uh, a lot from western ghats at the same time he uh, was very very famous because of his uh, poem on uh, the rust fungus and that poem i am very much uh, you can say proud to tell you that this is the only poem on fungi which has been published in the mycological society of, of america newsletter in 1969 uh, this volume so here uh, that poem i would like to um, uh, tell you that he wrote the poem on rust life cycle and that life cycle was uh, completed in that poem so i will just uh, tell you the two lines o oh, mighty rust god robigus we know you are a fungus paxinia gramini stritisai thy name destructing wheat crop thy fame like that he has uh, written an excellent poem and published in the mycological society of america journal now this is the website which i have developed uh, that is fungi from india first time from india i have developed this 7528 species i have reported uh, rather compiled from a variety of you can say books monographs as well as the research papers and of course this is the self funded website uh, which i have prepared 
and in this website uh, there are total now seven databases like indian aphylo fungal database indian myxomycetes database indian marine fungal database indian ascomycetes database indian mushroom database indian rust fungal database and the last is indian lichen database so these seven databases are there of course every database is one website and uh, you can uh, see the data from india as well as at the end of that particular uh, you can say card of that species you get the mycobank number or external reference on that if you could click then you will get the data from world of, about the same species so such type of we can say uh, work has been done just for you all uh, to get all these references at the single click so here this is how the website look like and of course here number of families number of genera number of species and total number of records which i have updated over here it is given over here okay so for this website um, professor neeta jagta from wagere college saswad and my friend dr harshwardhan khare help me a lot and of course all this you can see on internet it is because of uh, mr nikhil shivtare who is the engineer of our website so uh, this is how uh, rather this much uh, you can say love we should have about fungi it should not be like that it uh, sometimes a student or uh, the kid whenever any kid is going to bring some uh, mushroom over there then parent uh, parents generally uh, shout at them and say why you are bringing all these things these are dirty things so please try to uh, develop the uh, positive thing positive attitude um, towards these fungi then if uh, such type of things are possible uh, in world why not it in uh, in india so india also should start uh, so something from such type of you can say um, uh, 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 such, such type of structure buildings in the gardens or whatever biodiversity parks are there then only it is possible to develop certain awareness about these fungi so uh, i would like to thank uh, our principal dr pandit cheke sir at the same time i would like to thank uh, professor mukundan madam Uh, as well as dr suchandra madam for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, regarding uh, presentation so thank you thank you so much now uh, if there are any questions yeah. there be questions uh, praveen sir can you read them so before that i have one question sir yeah please ma'am um very often when people go on trekking they have okay. this habit of collecting some mushrooms Okay. and uh, eating which can uh, cause uh, great harm including okay. serious allergies and so right. awareness regarding uh, how to differentiate between edible and uh, non edible mushrooms so people okay. like you if you can come out with a small leaflet okay. would be a uh, great uh, very useful but uh, as a ready reckoner what okay. would be your suggestion be okay uh, uh, actually uh, i would like to uh, tell you this thing uh, generally uh, generally this is the common uh, you can say uh, question uh, which is asked about the poisonous as well as edible mushrooms but it's very uh, sorry to say that there are so many you can say uh, biochemicals which are present in those fungal species and it's very difficult to prepare a single test which can identify the poisonous and non poisonous because it is like that some species may be uh, poisonous to uh, some of the you can say uh, rats but those are not poisonous to human beings or vice versa means it is not uh, you can say finalized and more than 700 chemicals are reported which are poisonous uh, you can say chemicals so it's very difficult to prepare the if one uh, you can say single test or uh, hardly 10 to 15 test for identifying which is the poisonous and which is not not poisonous so you would suggest that people should not uh, take from by wilderness no. and yeah what yeah is your I, yeah, yeah it's it i i will suggest that it be it, it is not good at all to directly eat the fungi from wild if you are 100% sure 
and if you have seen many times people are eating the same fungus regularly then only you should try otherwise please do, do, don't try because it may create problems and okay. it will it will show problems as per your health also means if you are very healthy it may show uh, very uh, less symptoms but if you are very weak then it may uh, go uh, you know, to uh, up to any extent and it may be a very deadly uh, thing for that person so Thank i will you, not suggest it i will not Thank suggest you. yeah uh, pravin sir can you please read yeah uh, sir i have one question yeah uh, generally mushrooms uh, we see in the literature they are very rich in minerals and all minerals or some vitamins Okay. Is there any specific reason for it? Uh, actually, uh, in my so what mushroom, benefit does it give to those, those fungi? Okay, actually, uh, for mushrooms uh, uh, itself, it is one type of we can say defense against certain insects, certain uh, animals. Okay, like in plants, we get plant defense. So such chemicals having uh, means uh, tremendous, you can say, uh, irritating odors are there. So those are basically uh, prepared for the uh, irritation to those insects. But sometimes those are uh, prepared for or uh, generalized generally uh, present in the fruiting body for attracting insects also. So it is the basic role means whether to defend or whether to attract. Means some will be defended and some will be attracted towards. Uh, that so that that particular spore dispersal will take place so for that purpose uh, uh, that uh, chemical is already uh, prepared in the fruiting body so that is the actual use i think okay uh, sir uh, yeah. this, uh, sangeeta madam is there she is asking Okay. Sir, how is that fungi are able to reproduce asexually and sexually? Do some factors determine it? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, here, uh, what type of substratum is there? What type of you can say contents are there in the substratum? Uh, that uh, that is also very very important. As at the same time, life uh, you can say life cycle is also equally important. It's like for example, take uh, example of xylaria. All xylaria C family members uh, or xylaria C fungi. will be at first moment it will whenever the the stroma is developing at that time the upper side or the external side of that fruiting body is always white in color because all those whitish colored structures are nothing but the conidial formations and as the conidial formations uh, are going on the fruiting body is at the same time developing the sexual structures inside the uh, you can say uh, the stromas over there and of course those perithecia are forming uh, in the xylaria and the moment that those perithecia will mature at that time rather till that time that fungus should uh, continue its reproduction process and for that purpose a sexual phase will come first and then they say it will transform into the sexual phase so that is what the thing uh so there is um, dr karishma asking is there any other website except gras grass to find out okay. about pathogenicity details of fungi uh actually uh, there are so many websites uh, means if you put uh, plant pathology website then there are so many means uh, rather i should appreciate the efforts of these foreigners they have uh, prepared the websites on a single crops also if somebody is interested in the crop like wheat or jowar they have prepared websites uh, giving the details of those things so it is uh, rather so many things are there means if you are interested then i can send you some of the links also but there those are available on net many are there okay uh, sir dr kale sir is asking are the fungal enzymes commercially used yes of course means uh, one 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 thing i would like to tell you the fungi fungal group which i i showed that is uh, the dung fungus group discomycetes were the those fungi pazizels order so pazaiza was the that particular fungus so pazaiza group uh, is having tremendous diversity in enzymes and some of the industrialists have used that and they have prepared certain liquids so if your basin is smelling or it is having some certain uh, unpleasant odor over there then you can just put that liquid 
keep for 5 to 10 minutes and then just uh, i mean put the water it will uh, get gets off all those things so how it is possible so of course it is because of the fungal enzymes which are of course the those are uh, i mean prepared from uh, those pazazils as well as so many are there so such type of we can say commercially used fungi are there and of course many references are also there on this fungal enzymology so put the word fungal enzymology you can get so many fungal types over there uh, which are used for the enzymatic you can say study and enzymatic potentials so there are so many like uh, ligninases is one of the best you can say uh, industrially used enzymes ligninases are there at, as well as one more i would like to tell chitinases also okay so like fungi uh, like bivaria bassiana are very good at producing the chitinases right because those are entomopathogenic fungi and uh, those are generally having these types of enzymes so lignin whenever somebody want to degrade the lignin they can go for ligninases uh, uh, preparing uh, fungi and of course those are present in the wood rotting fungi like aphalophorales like uh, canoderma felinus like that so many are there you can uh, i mean use it but only thing before going into details of all those enzymology you first be able to identify that particular fungus because hardly 20 to 22% uh, fun fun fungi are identified from world and in india we are very fortunate that we are having such types of you can say western ghat regions which are full of fungi and uh, if you will start your work on identification then also we cannot complete uh, this work in uh, this particular one life cycle okay we have to go for many you can say such uh, you can say uh, plannings were there so that's why uh, it's very important first to go for taxonomy so please i will suggest you uh, you will definitely get the fungal enzymes and all those industrial applications very well but before that you must identify that rather you should be able to identify that and there are uh, i mean institutes like um, ncl or national chemical laboratory pune uh, where you can get uh, you can say series of you can say such types of enzymatic specific books are there if if you want ligninases uh, then they are having very good series of ligninases also so please uh, go to ncl and you can have those references okay Uh, sir i want to ask regarding fungi or mushrooms yeah. being poisonous uh, to humans but is it across the species animal species that may if it is poisonous to human is it poisonous to other animals or vice versa no the, the actually uh, i answered this uh, but i will answer once again uh, some species are poisonous to us but those are non poisonous to the animals but some species are poisonous to them but those are non poisonous to us like that also has happened so that's why it is very uh, tricky thing you should go for uh, first uh, chemical isolation first uh, taxonomic identification then chemical isolation what are the possible factors and then the testing should be done uh, of course uh, in the animal house by certain permissions you can do these uh, testings uh, what type of chemicals are there and then it is possible to find out at least which are edible which are non edible and i think the observation is one of the best thing to get information about this okay uh, sir durlav sangha sir uh, is asking any work done on dye extraction from fungi which are commercially exploited in india yes it's very uh, important question uh, actually uh, you might have visited the uh, ajanta and veru caves there those paintings whatever has been prepared those paintings are having dyes and those maximum dyes are extracted from lichens rather industry people uh, generally take the sing single you can say scratch uh, uh, rather single scraping Uh, from those uh, paintings and they just find out which types of chemicals are used and they just uh, develop the same thing uh, artificially and they use as a paint or dyes so it is possible and people have used but it is in combination and because of that only uh, it it can uh, you can say resist any condition so from uh, i think more than 400 years 500 years back also you get some of the paintings which are available and those uh, paintings uh, definitely are having the uh, extractions of whatever you can say available 
microbiota is there as well as whatever angiospermic you can say flowers uh, were available at that time so it was the combination actually and it is having good effects because uh, you might be knowing that lichen species are having uh, certain lichenic acids in every lichen so like uh, parmelic acid usnic acid uh, then stictic acid, nor stictic acid, like this, uh, you can say acids are there. And these acids are having mainly the properties which are antibacterial and antifungal properties. So that's why whenever some persons uh, are using for the painting purpose, uh, such type of acidic containing dyes, then those dyes are going to remain as it is for several years. So that is what the thing which has been developed already by the, uh, you can say, industrialist. Uh, sir, Dr. Kali is asking, nowadays fungi are also employed in preparing nanoparticles. What yes. is special in fungi that they can help ma making these particles? Okay, it's uh, once again very good question. Uh, actually, uh, nanoparticles, as we all know, uh, those are very much efficient in many areas. But here, the nanoparticles from fungi people are using for more biomedical purposes. Okay, so when they are giving some targets to those, those nanoparticles, of course, some organs, uh, cells are damaged, then it, it has been proved actually that some nanoparticles, whenever we are going to direct to the actual infected part, then the curing of that particular type of cancer is also uh, very much easier nowadays. It is because of the nanoparticles. That's why many a times these uh, plant nanoparticles at the same time, fungal nanoparticles are also equally used for the uh, actual biomedical purposes. And it is, uh, you can say, a very excellent branch. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, in India, uh, very few institutions are there uh, which are looking after the pure taxonomic things. So uh, it is my kind appeal to all, uh, as well as all these uh, very interested people, to go for taxonomy and, of course, the nanoparticles. Now, one uh, experiment you, you could do, just put any plant name on internet and just put nanoparticle in front of that. You will get more than 10 to 15 research papers which has been already published on that. But it is not with fungi. It is with angiosperms, flowering plants. So whenever you will uh, start your work with fungal nanoparticles, then definitely a lot of scope is there. And of course, the impact factors are also good. Uh, for those journals which are related to nanoparticles. So you can try that, no problem. Um, yes, sir. That's what, that was the last question. There are some yeah. few compliments uh, given for the excellent lecture, sir, given by you, as well Thank as the you. photography. Thank you. Yeah. Praveen, sir, will you please do the honors? Um, proposing vote of thanks. Okay, madam. Yeah. Yeah, it's a privilege and honor uh, to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of uh, Association of Teachers in Biological Sciences, ATBS, and Department of Biological Sciences, Ram Niranjan Junjunwala College. I extend our gratitude and thanks to Dr. Kiran Randive, sir, for accepting our invitation and uh, giving an excellent talk. Uh, sir, thank you very much. Thank uh, you, sir. Yeah. Um, you have given a wide range of the photographies were good, photos and uh, excellent information regarding um, the, the diversity of fungi seen around us. Uh, I also would like to thank the teachers and participants from ATBS, as well as from our college, as well as different colleges who have attended this webinar. I also uh, extend uh, gratitude and thanks to the teachers, um, to our teachers like Dr. Karmaka sir. Uh, he's, uh, he's not now present, but then uh, uh, he has left the meeting. But then still, I would like to thank him. And uh, also... Uh, he left the meeting because he said tree yeah, falls. Yeah, yes, there is some some crane, some some voice disturbance was there in the meeting. So yes, uh, but then I would like to thank him also. Uh, I'd like to thank all the students uh, of our college, as well as of different colleges, right, who have attended this webinar. And uh, last but not the least, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Devi Prasad Shetty, 
for the excellent uh, you can say uh, uh, flyers i would say uh, being put up on various sites uh, regarding the lecture series as well as providing technical assistance the, for all the webinars being done here so thank you very much thank you sir yeah. thank you very think, much yeah i think uh, priya sharma raised the hand like that something okay any question or what i'll just say so. yeah priya sharma is no nothing no question in the chat as such any any questions from anyone they want to yeah. ask they can hand hand was red i think acha maybe yeah. maybe by mistake okay okay no no problem they can ask me on mail also no it, that is not an issue okay sir sir if you, if you just find up before maybe she is a student can you just guide students how to move about in research in anjai uh just now pardon okay okay just now i should tell he will yeah. be available on email so they can ask him okay okay nidhi gupta yeah, need, also need, nidhi gupta also is there uh, let yeah. them ask no issues because because uh, that becomes very specific i think they also need to know what is their liking or yeah, which level right. they are right, right yeah right right, right. and no uh, so the yeah. same thing is also being streamed live on youtube yeah, so right. people also have an opportunity to view it as and when they can and yeah, it is yeah. there on our website yes. uh, as open course where so anybody can uh, view it right i have already uh, given one talk on uh, uh, the secret success secrets of phd okay Yeah, maybe you can uh, share that link yeah 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 surely surely i will yeah, thank you in that students can get more things yeah sure sure thank you sir yeah. okay thank you madam thank you very much yeah devi prasad can you please uh, end the meeting